Okay, hi. Uh, so I'm Chaba. I'm not going to pronounce my last name either. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to talk about how you can benefit from the customizer as a user, but also as a designer or developer of WordPress sites and themes. Um, just a word about me. I'm a father of three great children and husband of one wonderful woman. Thanks to them that I can be a part-time developer, front-end developer, let's say. I love WordPress and JavaScript, um, and if I have some spare time, I play guitar or listen to music. Uh, let's start something with something a bit harder, a definition. Uh, so I looked for a definition of customiza customization, and I thought uh, I'd translate it to the customizer, and I came to the following, a previewable modification made to WordPress site to suit the intent of the site, the preferences of the site owner, or the task of the visitor. Uh, I think that the customizer is a great tool to implement customizations to a WordPress site. Um, it's beneficial for the user or site owner because it, they can preview, draft and even schedule changes that they want to make to their site. Uh, it gives them a kind of controlled creative freedom. They can change stuff, but it depends on a the theme, what they can change. And because of this, they can create something unique out of a theme they bought or <coughs> website they have. Uh, and for a designer, it's definitely a cool cost standardized tool with a great API. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Uh, it's definitely additional value that you can add uh, for your customer. Uh, it can be a selling point for if you're selling themes or premium option uh, for your um, themium, premium WordPress themes um, because it offers control and options to the user. Um, and if we talk about options, I want to remind you of the, of the WordPress philosophy, which says that we should, as designers or developers, uh, make decisions and not leave all the options um, for the user, end user. This can be frustrating, definitely if it's not implemented simply. Sim simply. Um, also, probably all themes and sites should work out of the box. Um, you can read the philosophy at this URL. Okay, so to start, really start, uh, this presentation is actually powered by the customizer. You can check it out on GitHub. I, it's a work in progress. I learned a lot while doing it. Uh, so I implemented a couple of customization options in this theme. And actually, each presentation slide is a widget. You can edit them <coughs> like this. Uh, also, you can go to the next widget. The preview goes to the next widget so you can see your edits. Kind of PowerPoint experience. Um, so the rest of the presentation, I, I'm going to try to give you some practical examples how you can uh, use the customizer to implement uh, customizations. Uh, I hope you are familiar with the customizer a bit. Um, and with the standard options, you can support as a team, for example, a custom logo, um, which you can add as a user. Let me add this cool fright. Okay. So it's not coming. Let me try to just restart it. Okay, I'm not logged in. Cool. Live demoing is always great. Okay. Okay, let's try again. Oh yeah. So you can add this logo and after adding it, for example, you can add the option for the user to resize it. You see it here or just to, to change the position of it. Um, so let's go back to the slide where I was. Uh, you have also a lot of other standard options which you can pimp a bit, let's say. Uh, you have a color options. Uh, you have the standard color picker you can use. You could also add a different second background color to create gradients. I'm not able to show you everything because I uh, won't have the time to finish the talk. 
uh, instead of the standard color picker option, you have also this hue control, with which you can, or is a link, you can adjust the link color, for example. <coughs> and after you edit something, let me show you this. Um, shortly, you have the option to save it or draft it and schedule it also. And if you're scheduling it, you get a link that you can share with your, for example, client or one who have to approve, approve um, a certain change. And they can look at your site with those changes. They can look at all the changes. And after approval, it can be published. Or you can also discard the changes if you want. Um, let's publish it now. So, a couple of other single options. You probably all know the problem, adding a background image. The text becomes unreadable. You could add some kind of layer of which the transparency can be adjusted by the user. Uh, so the text is again uh, readable. You can toggle elements, hide and show, for example, post meta data for blog posts. And you can add it also, uh, you can add also editable elements, for example, some kind of contact information, phone number, the right top of your site. Uh, and also not to forget, remove controls that you don't use because it can also be weird to have an option. It doesn't do anything. Um, okay, so those were kind of single options that affect one element of the site. You could also use more complete customizations. For example, a color scheme. You can take a look at 2015 or the 2016 default theme to see the implementation of that. <coughs> or kind of alternative view for, for something in your theme. If you have a portfolio theme uh, with portfolio items in a grid layout, you could allow the user with one click to change it to some kind of more linear layout or, or, or full screen layout. Um, also, you have also this additional CSS option where you can add any CSS code to change the layout of your site. And in some use cases, it's, it's, it's a better alternative than a child theme to change a theme as, uh, as you wish. Um, so those are more complete customization options. Okay. Uh, custom front page, it's also possible to do this, to build a custom front page or a custom page in the customizer. I'm going to skip this because it might be kind of pre-Gutenberg. Maybe if you have Gutenberg, you can use those blocks to really build a custom page. Um, but it's, it's feasible and it's possible in the customizer too. A great other feature of the customizer is adding media controls. So people can add images, audio or video to their site. Uh, in this example, I, I, I project I did, we had this birdie on the album cover and on her site, if you click on the bird, it starts to move a bit around and, and, and songs start to play. And uh, the artist, Martin, is in, can in the customizer choose which song is played and she can also hide the bird if, you, if she doesn't want it to be there anymore. So you can go a bit, yeah, you can do some creative stuff using the customizer too. And still leave the user um, to change it. Another cool, interesting feature uh, available from 4.7 is the starter content. It's actually predefined content that is defined by the team mostly. <coughs> and when you load a theme in a fresh WordPress install in the customizer, you can see that content. So actually your theme is set up um, as if it should look like. We all know the problem buying a theme or installing a theme and it doesn't look like the demo. So this allows us to do that. And you can uh, define any content you like almost, any content type in WordPress, even options. If you would download this theme from GitHub and you install it in a fresh install, you would see a couple of my slides as they are meant to be, not all of them because it's a lot to implement, but you can check it out or read more about it in this blog post. Uh, a couple of more things to check out is the change set, which I just talked about, saving and scheduling. Uh, and also 
validations and notifications in the control panel, a uh, control pane of the customizer, which is also also cool user experience, I think. And I would like to chat with you after my talk about the future of customization in WordPress and what it will bring us with Gutenberg and Customizer combined. That's it from me. Thank you.